In the next set of problems, we're going to look at the opposite uh, of what we've been doing. So uh, thus far, we've been calculating the KSP from solubility data. Uh, in this set of problems, we're going to be calculating the solubility from the KSP. And what's going to distinguish these problems is that we're going to need to write an ice table. So if you look, um, the setup for these problems, it's going to go something like this. So it says, in hydride is a calcium sulfate mineral deposited when seawater evaporates. What is the solubility of calcium sulfate in grams per liter if the KSP is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 5? So we're given a KSP and we're asked to calculate the solubility of calcium sulfate in grams per liter. So we have what we're going to uh, calculate and what we're, we need to start with. So like all these problems, we're going to start by writing down our reaction. Uh, calcium sulfate solid is in equilibrium with calcium 2 plus aqueous and SO4 2 minus aqueous. And then we can write our KSP expression, which is going to equal the concentration of calcium 2 plus times the concentration of SO4 2 minus. And now the reason why we need an ice table is because they give us the KSP, which is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 5. So if we can get variables for calcium 2 plus and SO4 2 minus, we can plug that in here and then solve this equation for X to get um, what the concentrations are. So when we write our ice table, we're going to start with calcium 2 plus and SO4 2 minus. Uh, we're going to have I, C, and E, uh, 0 molar and 0 molar. The reason why we start with 0 molar is because in this case, there's no indication that we have any um, pre-existing concentrations of either of those ions in the problem. And when you first put the solid in, it hasn't dissolved yet. So you get uh, 0 molar and 0 molar. So we're going to get plus X and plus X. And then um, at equilibrium, we're going to have x and x. So now um, what we can do is we can actually plug those values in um, for calcium 2 plus and sulfate 2 minus. Um, so we get x squared over here. Uh, so we can say that 2.45 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to x squared. So if we take the square root of both sides, x is going to equal 4.80 times 10 to the minus 3 molar, that's what comes out of um, our KSP expression, because these are molar concentrations. And then because of the stoichiometry, we can say that this is equal to the concentration of 2 plus, and it's also equal to the concentration of SO4 2 minus. Uh, that's because both of those are x. So now if the problem was asking you for the concentration of either one of those ions, you'd be, done, you'd be basically done at this point. Um, however, the problem is asking us for something specific. It's asking us for the solubility, which is going to be grams of the calcium sulfate per liter. So what we have to do is we have to get our 4.80 times 10 to the minus 3 um, moles per liter of calcium 2 plus into uh, grams per liter of calcium sulfate. Oops. So um, we have to first convert this to the moles of solute. So for every one mole of calcium 2 plus, there is one mole of calcium sulfate. So that actually makes this problem a little bit easier because we have a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. And then for every one mole of calcium sulfate, we can use the molecular weight. Um, so if you look that up, it's 136.14 grams. Um, now we wind up with units of grams per liter, which is what we want, of the calcium sulfate. Uh, there's still liters on the bottom. And when you do that math out, you get 0 0.67 grams per liter. So our solubility is going to be 0 0.67 grams of calcium sulfate per liter, which is what they're asking for. So in the next problem, um, we're going to look at a little bit more complicated case where we have um, a non-one-to-one -one stoichiometry. In this second problem, um, you can see already that what makes this a little bit more complicated is that our stoichiometry is now calcium 1 fluoride 2. So when we write out the equation for this, um, we have calcium fluoride solid goes back and forth with calcium 2 plus aqueous plus 2 F minus aqueous. And our KSP is going to equal uh, the concentration of calcium 2 plus times the concentration of F minus, and we square that because of the stoichiometry, um, because of the two there. So now, um, as we did in the previous uh, problem, we're gonna write down our KSP, which is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 11. And now we gotta get variables for the calcium and the fluoride. So to do that, we need our ice table. So we have calcium two plus and F minus at the top, 
and we put our I, C, and E. Uh, we start with zero molar and zero molar because nothing has dissolved yet. And now here comes where we have to be careful with our stoichiometry. So if you look, we have uh, one uh, plus X for calcium, but we're going to have plus two X for fluorine, for fluoride because of the um, the two stoichiometric coefficients, because when it dissolves, it makes two fluorides for every one calcium. So um, then that's going to give us X and 2X, which we're then going to plug in. So this is going to give us X times 2X squared. Now, this is a place to be a little careful because this is one of those places where you might make a mistake. So when you square 2X, you have to square both the 2 and the X. So that's going to give you 4X squared times X. Um, which is equal to 3.4 times 10 to the minus 11. And then when you combine those, you get 4x cubed, which is equal to 3.4 times 10 to the minus 11. So if you divide both sides by 4 and then take the cubed root uh, of that, you can solve for x. And so x in this case is going to equal uh, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. And now we have to be a little careful. So the this is going to be so this is going to be the constant this is going to be our x which is going to equal the concentration of the calcium 2 plus. So the concentration of calcium 2 plus is going to equal uh, our 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. Now our concentration of fluoride we have to multiply this by 2 because of the 2x there. So in this case this is going to equal 4.8 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. So you have to make sure that you, you do this correctly because we, we have to take into consideration that there's only one of the calcium 2 plus and that there's two of the fluoride. So if this were to ask you for the concentrations, you could just stop right there. Um, in this case, though, it's asking us again for the solubility in grams per liter of calcium fluoride. So we have to do our conversion. So we'll take 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. Um, and then remember, this is moles per liter of, F of calcium 2 plus. I'm pulling that from there. You could do the F minus also. And then we could say for every one mole of the calcium 2 plus, there are one there is one mole of the calcium fluoride and then we multiply this by the molecular weight so every one mole of calcium fluoride there is 78.07 grams and you get that from the periodic table so this is going to equal 0 0.016 grams per liter of the calcium fluoride so that's our solubility in a little bit more complicated case um, this step is very important because um, if, for example, this were Ca3PO42, um, you would ha you couldn't you'd have to go back and actually calculate both the times three and the times two and then do this. Now, a little hint: the x in this case, because of the way the stoichiometry works out, the x will always be the solubility of the solute. So you can take that concentration of the X and use that to get to grams per liter for any for, to, of the solute. So even if the, the stoichiometry is more complicated, like uh, two and three or, or any, anything that's other than um, one and something else, that X is, is always going to be the solubility because it works out that that is um, the base and then we multiply that to get however many ions are in, in the uh, solution. So um, so I just wanted to point that out. But if you do this bottom step down here, you'll never go wrong. You'll always get the right answer as long as you do this, this main step right there.